Hello and welcome. Well, I guess it's not any secret that I enjoy bicycles. And I'm guessing that if you're watching this video, so do you. So congratulations, birds of a feather and all that. I recently had an opportunity to purchase the bike that you're looking at right now. This is a 1951 Schwinn World Traveler. And I was able to positively ID it as such from the serial number. In fact, it was built on March 5th, 1951. How cool is that? I bought this bike from the daughters of a gentleman who recently passed away, sadly, and he bought this new. So I am the second owner of this 1951 Schwinn. And I tell you, I am going to do everything I can to honor that. I love the looks of this old bike. I mean, it's just classic in every sense of the word. Up front in the cockpit, it's got typical for the time, fairly narrow steel handlebars on a quill stem. Some of the chrome is flaking off, but you know, I can deal with that. From above, the handlebars have what I think of as a letter M shape. Uh, <laughs> the position felt a little bit odd to me when I wrote it, but then again, you know, I'm used to wide flat bars, so be that as it may. The shifter is a three-speed Sturmey Archer thumb shifter because the bike itself is, as you guessed, a three-speed. It has a Miller headlamp from England, and it still has the original Schwinn branded grips. Moving a little bit further down on the front, we come to the front wheel. Oh, but first, check out that fin on the front fender. That is just great. And this is not the first early 50s Schwinn I've had. I once had a 50... Two, I believe uh, ladies 24 inch model same color scheme and same great shock fin now the rims front and rear are steel and they're 26 by 1 and 3 8 and after all these years it is unbelievable to me but they are pretty much true it, it just blows my mind there's a functional odometer on the front wheel and I know it's functional because I put a tenth of a mile on it. I'm pretty sure though it's had more than 800 and some odd miles in its lifetime. May have been around the clock once or twice. It's got a Miller friction generator on the front and this does work. I tried it. The headlamp works. The tail light didn't but I don't know if that's a wiring issue or if it just needs a bulb. Either way, that's not going to be terribly difficult to repair. The brake levers are Schwinn branded, as are the front and rear side pull brakes. In fact, all the subcomponents on this bike are Schwinn branded. There's nothing from away, so to speak, because as you can see in these graphics, this bike was built in Chicago, Illinois, USA. And I think the fact that the graphics have stood up so well after all these years is a testament to how well the first owner of this bike took care of it. Now the thing about these graphics is they're what they call water slide graphics. Think back to your youth if you ever built a model car or a model airplane and you had to soak your decals in warm water before applying them to your model? Well, it's the same underlying principle, just a little heavier gauge. My plan here is not to restore this bike, but to preserve it in its current condition. Because, as they say in the collectible car industry, it's only original once. The crank set is a typical one-piece crank set from that era. Good solid piece of steel, let me tell you, that is heavy. 
Uh, back then, the bottom brackets contained cup and cone bearings, and so I am somewhat anxious to take this apart and see what kind of shape they're in. I will say, on the short test ride that I did in my neighborhood, it felt smooth. Uh, the uh, pedals, they're the old style rebuildables. And so I'm going to completely take those apart, regrease the bearings and clean up everything that can be cleaned. And this is the jewel in this crown. It's the Sturmy Acha three speed hub. I have long believed that these Sturmy Acha three speed hubs are just a fantastic piece of engineering with the way the planetary gears and the shafts and so forth mesh together is just, I think, very, very clever. I mean, <laughs> I can't imagine me sitting around and all of a sudden going, hey, you know what? I bet if I did this, 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 and this, I could make a three-speed hub. I, I would never think of doing something like that, but these folks did. Also still has the original chain gear changer. Uh, it's got a little bit of a bend in it. I'm going to try to very gently straighten that. If not, these are still available. New old stock uh, places like eBay. And then we come to the saddle. The saddle has a series of springs underneath the covering. And the covering appears to be a really, really heavy grade of vinyl, not leather. And yet it's still supple. Well, as supple as, you know, thick vinyl leather was. And it's not an uncomfortable saddle. I mean, you look at it from the side and it's like, oh my goodness. One thing that is going to have to be changed are the fenders. According to the 1953 catalog, which I found online, uh, the fenders were chrome. And clearly these have been painted. Probably because they developed surface rust. I can't imagine why else somebody would do that. So first thing I'm going to do is strip the paint off them and see if they can be buffed out. And if not, uh, I think I will splurge on this one instance and have them replated because spotty, rusty chrome just doesn't do it, you know. So that pretty much wraps up a first look at the uh, World Traveler in its uncleaned as purchased condition. I did take some time and uh, got to know the bike a little bit better with a thorough cleaning. <laughs> oh my gosh, that, uh, that chain, it wasn't dirty, it was crusty. So that will be replaced, but it's good enough for now. Everything that's supposed to be shiny is now shiny. Everything that is not supposed to be greasy is now not greasy. Some of the graphics cleaned up a little bit. Uh, I think it was just a, a case of having accumulated dirt and grime from being in storage for a while. Uh, as I said earlier, I'm not going to restore this bike as much as preserve it. And uh, I do look forward, though, to doing the mechanical service because I just, I love fooling around with stuff like that. I, I get a kick out of taking things apart and putting them back together. And it's even better when those things work afterwards and I don't have any spare parts left over. Not that that ever happened. That anybody can prove. If you enjoyed this video, I have a link below to a playlist for some of my other vintage bikes. This is not the only one I have. And there's also a link to another video that I think you'll enjoy. And if you did enjoy this, please leave me a thumbs up. That really does help the channel quite a bit. And as always, thanks for watching. Seriously, I am always grateful for that, and I appreciate every time you do. Goodbye, and have a great day.